Uh, welcome. This video will be discussing how to connect bipolar transistors in parallel. This will involve uh, issues such as a parallel transistor constant current source that will solve a number of technical problems, how to do it, and why we should do it. I'm your host, Lewis Laughlin. Visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Most of you know that. And let's get to it. All right, let's get right to it. Here is the circuit diagram. This has been built and tested, and I will go through what I have found on this and discuss a lot, number of issues related to bipolar transistors. In essence, we have a current that comes in from our power supply VN. The current will split in this test setup through two 1 ohm resistors. Each, tra each 1 ohm resistor will have, uh, have the base current and collective current of its associated transistor T1 or T2. At each transistor, the base current and collector currents will split again. In this case, both base currents and both transistors will be um, will go to U1, it's an LM317 constant current source that is used as a current sink to ground. The base current is set by the adjustment of R adjust, a 200 ohm pot. In addition, the collector output of each transistor goes back together over to a load RL. Now these X's that you see is where I insert an ammeter to make measurements, to measure my amps and so forth. Here is a transistor down here. I'll discuss that later. That's not really part. We're not really ready for that yet. Let us drop back to an earlier circuit that many of you have already seen. This uses a single PNP transistor and the LM317 shunt configuration. In this case, I have adjusted the LM317 shunt or constant current source to give me one amp output as measured across the load resistor, five volts, five watts, so forth. If you take the measured 148 that I had on this particular transistor and divide it into one amp, you get 6.75 milliamps. That is in fact what I measured at pin three with an ammeter. I was just basically shocked how close the calculation was to the actual measured result. Note something in all of these slides that are coming up. This again was conducted at, since the HFE was measured at 148, at room temperature, I maintain room temperature on the heat sink when I made these measurements. The HFE will change based on somewhat on um, temperature of the case, but it also changes dependent on the current through the transistor, as we will explore later on. All right, here is my actual working circuit as I built and tested it. I used a 15 volt 30 watt supply. This supplied a little over two amps to the circuit. It would split between the two one ohm resistors and its corresponding transistor. The base current of each transistor would come together down here at the LM317 sink. The sink current is determined by a 200 ohm potentiometer. And I measured it out. What I did was adjusted this for two amps output across the load, a five ohm resistor, which had 10 volts at 20 watts basic ohm's law. At 10 volts and 20 watts, or 2 amps in this case, I measured the voltage and current 
same thing if you measure the voltage across the one ohm resistor that's also the current matched very very well in fact what happened is I had a bad solder connection on one of the resistors when I first uh, put the circuit together and it drove all the current it worked it drove all the current through a single transistor and it got hot you could feel the difference by putting your finger on it and of course the measurements didn't make any sense but once that was repaired they were within 20 milliamps of each other very close I was surprised and so there was my measured two amps I knew what was going on over here I measured the current through pin 3 of the LM317 that would be IB1 plus IB2 base current 2 was exactly 13.5 milliamps if we divide 13 point seven thirteen point five milliamps divided by two equals six point seven five remember this six point seven five and I maintained a split balance current through the two transistors now note I measured these transistors at 25 degrees C or room temperature on a transistor checker they were both uh, had an HFE or DC gain of 148 and by splitting the current through them like I did I maintained the same operating conditions so this makes perfect sense each of these transistors even though my total sum current is 2 amps each transistor is acting as a single transistor with a one amp uh, current uh, collector current and a corresponding base current and I doubled the base current when I put in two transistors split the current evenly and I maintain and I set and I reduce the heat on any individual transistor and so forth here is my actual test setup here's the constant currents source jig that I use for testing this stuff this is an ammeter 5 ohm load here are my two transistors and their 1 ohm resistors on this heat sink they're evenly spaced this may, helps the transistors maintain an equal temperature this is the transistor that I used it's an MJE 2955T it's a little TO220 case as you see here and these transistors are rated for 10 amp collector current 60 volts and 75 watts all right this is where it starts to get interesting you can't go by these spec sheets you have to know how to read these spec sheets 10 amps that's fine the first thing I do is derate the current coming from that transistor that is 10 amps at room temperature if it starts warming up this thing can shift significantly so I derate it 30 percent right off the top so I'm looking at it as 6 amps here is the uh, from the spec sheet itself this is the power derating and this is 75 watts or so at room temperature but by the time but by the time I reach 50 degrees C or about 122 degrees Fahrenheit uh, my power rating has dropped 15 watts just that fast and you notice it goes down fairly steep by the time you hit 100 you've dropped you can only dissipate your power rating is down to 30 watts by the time you hit 100 degrees C you're crazy to operate this thing at 100 degrees C try to limit it back the closer you can limit it the better now when I split those transistors and use less current through individual transistors and so forth the heat dissipation was spread out over a larger area and I maintained 
a higher watt rating than what I would have. Another issue is your HFE, your DC gain, shifts based on the current through the transistor. And this is not heat. This is collector current versus HFE. If you look at it this way, my original one transistor I was operating at uh, one amp would be here at one amp. And uh, let me make you aware of something else. Just because this spec sheet says this is an HFE of 80 or something based on um, some chart in a spec sheet, most often it's wrong. Uh, the ones I had were had considerably higher gain than what is shown here. The, the spec sheets give you a general range, a minimum and a maximum. You need to be aware of that. Now, if I had run an, an individual transistor at 2 amps, instead of splitting it into two transistors at 1 amp, look where I end up with on the HFE in this um, graph at 2 amps. I have considerably dropped my HFE down to, uh, I've dropped nearly 40 HFE on my gain just by doubling this current over to 2 amps. Look what happens to your HFE by the time you're getting over here at 5 amps. And you're getting down here at 10 amps. You're dropping to as little as an HFE of 15. So that means you're going to have to drive more current through it to get the current that you're getting because the HFE is falling like a rock. And the more current you drive into it, the more heat you generate, which means you're going to derate it even more. Isn't that fun? So we'll look at closer at this issue here in the next. Like I said, the next video will cover, you will see this in action when we parallel three transistors and so forth. So, uh, this may have been a little laborious at times, but you need to know this stuff. Uh, the more I work with this on this level, the more I, I learned a lot building these circuits. And that's how you do it. You learn by doing. And sometimes it gets to be a little bit of work. But nonetheless, I appreciate you watching this uh, video through. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Um, share with your friends, subscribe, and the next video, as I said, will be paralleling three transistor, bipolar transistors. Catch you on the next one.